There is a rumor among stalkers that you can travel anywhere in the zone, only using the underground. No location better illustrates this ID than the Pripyat 1 underpass, also known as the Jupiter Underground. Hello stalkers and welcome to the anomalous dugout. In this video we will take a look at a part of this giant network of tunnels, the underpass. Obviously there will be spoilers, and I would also like to say that this video is part of a series, so I suggest you go watch the previous episodes if you haven't already. Link to the playlist in the description. As usual, let's start with a bit of history. In the last episode about the testing workshop, we learned that the Jupiter factory was used both before and after the appearance of the zone, as a production plant for components used in the secret X laboratories. One such object was item 62, also called the Gauss rifle. According to various documents found in the now deserted factory, the means of production, as well as a few dozen units of item 62s, were transported underground to be relocated in the X-Labs. The underground passage that was used for this operation was none other than the Pripyat-1 underpass. This giant complex of tunnels is located below the city of Pripyat, and has an entrance directly below the Jupiter factory. Following the transportation of all the goods and the evacuation of the Jupiter plant, the underpass was sealed and filled with a toxic gas composed of carbon dioxide with a chemical additive. It is unknown why the tunnels were closed like this, but my theory is that the people behind the secret experiments in the zone wanted to cover their tracks and prevent the military, as well as stalkers, to use the underground passage. However, there are still a few stalkers who managed to enter into the underground, the most well-known example of this being Major Dektyrev and his team. After discovering the schematics of the underpass and other documents describing how the entrance was sealed, the Major understood that the tunnel could be used to travel from Jupiter to Pripyat, which was very important, because stalkers were unable to reach the city. Dektyrev built a team, most likely composed of Zulu, Sokolov, Vano, and Strider, and they all acquired suits with closed-cycle respiratory modules to be able to survive the gas. The technician, Nitro, accepted to help them, and repaired the generator, allowing the squad to use the elevator going down the basement. Even though the stalkers made it downstairs, the power supplied died for good. Great, just great. Shutting down the elevator and preventing anyone from using this entry point ever again. But this does not mean that access to the underground was completely blocked, as I believe that other entrances also exist. Indeed, the underpass is not just a small passage, it is a large network of tunnels and railroads with huge rooms. Of course, many parts are collapsed or hidden behind locked doors, but the enormous scale of the place is clearly suggested. Since it was used to move the production complex of the Jupiter factory to unspecified secret laboratories, it is quite obvious that the underground system is in fact so large that it connects several locations of the experiments. Maybe the legend is true after all, and all X labs in the zone are connected to the underpass. Who knows? In any case, Dektyrev and his team managed to travel through the tunnels and successfully reached Pripyat. During their trip, they went through the toxic gas 
that was pumped in the sealed area. But when they opened the exit doors, the gas quickly dissipated in the larger volume, and also thanks to a large hole in the ceiling. Despite the presence of this gas, the underpass was inhabited by mutants, such as rodents and snorks, who appeared to be unaffected by the toxicity. The fact that snorks made their way down here is also a hint that many other entrances to the underpass exist. Moreover, a bunch of zombies were also encountered, probably the remains of stalkers who succumbed to the effects of the formerly active psi-emitter known as the Brain Scorcher. Lastly, it is important to note that our squad of heroes was ambushed by soldiers and snipers of the monolith faction. This confirms the fact that the monolithians know about the tunnels in the zone, and that they actually use them to their advantage. It is possible that many of the stashes found in the underpass were made by the monolith faction. Indeed, we can find a lot of equipment and valuable stuff in the area, including weapons, ammunition, medicine, artifacts, and even a silver suit. As I already said, this stuff could have been hidden by the Monolithians, but also by other people. The items left in the sealed area probably date back to the time before the underpass was filled with gas, just like all the vehicles found in the tunnel. As for the other stashes, Maybe they were made by the few lucky stalkers who visited the underground as well. Speaking of which, we do know of a few people who used these tunnels before. It is almost certain that Strelok, Ghost and Fang only managed to get past the Brain Scorcher by using a passage below the ground. This is how they were able to get to Pripyat, Jupiter and of course the power plant. So it is very likely that they visited at least some parts of the underground network under Pripyat. And it also means that the complex stretches very far, as they needed to use an entrance located outside of the area of effect of the brain scorcher. During the events of Clear Sky, Strelok also used a tunnel as a shortcut to the center of the zone. However, we know that this was a different passage than the one he used before, as he clearly states it in his message to his friends. Our plan is as follows. We can't make it through the underground, so our only option is to go past the scorcher. The entrance to this underground area is located at the edge of the Red Forest, but Strelok blew up the tunnel after going through so that nobody else could follow him. It is unknown if this basement actually has anything to do with the Pripyat underground, but I would not be surprised if the two were connected. Anyway, we do know for sure that the Clear Sky faction did use the Pripyat underground to reach the power plant, as it is confirmed by Lebedev himself. Advanced squad. Your objective is to find the entrance to the Pripyat underground. The entrance is at the old hospital on the edge of Limansk. While in the hospital, the location is now referred to as the Catacombs. Base, we're at the entrance to the Catacombs. What now? Great. Get in position and hold the entrance to the Catacombs. The main squad is on its way. Sadly, we don't get to see the trip in the underground, as it was cut and now happens during the transition from the hospital to the CNPP. So, during the loading screen, basically. Finally, mentions of the Pripyat underground are also made by various characters in Call of Pripyat. Kowalski reveals that a stalker named Guide led the military survivors to the city of Pripyat. And even though he does not tell if they traveled underground or on the surface, it is likely that they actually used the underpass. This is because Strelok 
later used the tunnels under the city to reach the army. It's underground. And according to him, it was also Guide who showed him the way. Last but not least, Gary managed to find an underground passage leading from Jupiter to Pripyat by himself, so probably a part of the underpass as well. Now, if there is something that I bring up in every episode of this series, it is the fact that the underground locations are still supplied in electricity. And this time is no different. We saw earlier in the video that the generator powering the elevator that was repaired by Nitro died right after the Tyref's squad reached the bottom. Moreover, a document describing the ceiling of the underpass claims that the power was completely cut and that the doors were closed by welding. Despite all of this, when Dektyrev and his team explored the area, not only were the lights and ventilation fans still working, but the doors were simply electrically opened using their control panels. So it appears that there is a major inconsistency here. Unless we are missing something. My first guess is that the doors, which were welded, are not the doors inside the underpass, but just the entrance doors that are located under the Jupiter factory. You know, that's the place where you encounter some burers. And about the electricity, well, who knows? It could be an anomalous phenomenon, the zone giving an excess of energy in the form of electricity. But the power could also have been restored by people who needed to travel in the underpass, such as the monolithians. In fact, in the giant room where the monolith ambush takes place, our protagonists are only blocked there because the power of the exit door was cut. Thankfully, a fully functional transforming station was standing there, so a few adjustments to its settings, as well as a visit to the control room, were enough to open the door. It is unknown if the door had been disconnected from the power lines by the monolith to set up their ambush, or if it was just a coincidence. But in any case, it confirms that energy is somehow not a problem down there. Another thing I want to mention is the fact that there are many, many collapsed hallways in the underpass. Of course, this is a very convenient way for the map makers to prevent the player from going everywhere, while still giving the impression that the area is much bigger than what we just see. However, there is also a logical explanation to that. When the zone first appeared back in 2006, a very powerful earthquake accompanied the disaster. Even though the structures and tunnels are solid, I am not sure that they would have been designed to withstand such a large seismic shock, since big earthquakes basically never happen in this part of the world. This, combined with the frequent tremors caused by blowouts and anomalous activities, are in my opinion the reason for all the collapsed buildings and underground areas that we can find in the games. Most likely, the underpass was hit hard during the earthquake of 2006, and many of its sections collapsed, blocking a lot of vehicles inside. Anyway, despite the damage, the underground system was still used by the scientists who survived the catastrophe and continued to work in the X-Labs, before it was finally abandoned for good. Before we end this video, there is one last detail that we need to talk about. You didn't think I would forget about that, would you? Hidden in the Jupiter factory, close to the entrance to the underpass, we can find a strange device. 
it appears to be active, as it emits some light. But at the same time, it does not do anything, and cannot be broken. Thankfully, we know what this device is used for, because we can find two others in Pripyat. The first is located on top of a makeshift statue of the monolith, in the bookstore. Kowalski, something strange is going on here. There were loads of monolith fighters inside the building. They were all in a trance and talking to a pile of trash. I examined this pile, and if you cut through the crap, it resembles a primitive antenna. It seems that someone talks to them through this antenna, and they believe it to be divine intervention. This is all very strange. Someone's controlling these fanatics. So, this device is actually some sort of emitter that was used by the sea consciousness to manipulate the fanatics and transmit their orders. Here we can see that it was deactivated, explaining why the monolithians could not hear the voice of the monolith anymore. The second device is inside the kindergarten. I don't think it's a coincidence that there is a monolith stashed nearby. In any case, that emitter was active, and connected to a strange contraption with large speakers, which is the source of a small psi field, as well as a long-range radio jammer. Destroying the small device first is not enough to deactivate the psi field and the jammer, but taking down the whole structure does the trick. We can also note that the device looks similar to a component found in the psi emitters of the brain scorcher, directly at the base of the antennas. Considering all of this, it is very likely that this so-called antenna is an advanced type of Kamenov emitter, that produces subtle psi waves specifically directed at the members of the monolith faction. But what's the link with the underpass? Well, since we found one such device in the Jupiter factory, and very close to the entrance of the basement, I believe that this model of antenna was one of the other secret objects manufactured in Jupiter, along with the Gauss gun. Its production complex was probably moved to the X-Labs at the same time as item 62's, using the underpass, but for some reason, one of the units was forgotten here. If we stretch the ID further, it is possible that many other components of the machines found in the zone were built in the Jupiter factory, maybe even parts of the rainbow emitter, the brain scorcher. Well, I guess that's all I wanted to talk about regarding the Pripyat 1 underpass. Make sure to tell me what you think of all of this in the comments below. As for now, I thank you for watching, stalkers, and goodbye.